Hey everyone, Adam from Underground Hive here with a mixed breakdown video series for our latest single, Under the Moonlight. The, going to do this uh, by request from a, a couple people and just to kind of familiarize myself with OBS and streaming and creating YouTube videos and things like that. Who knows, we'll see what kind of fun we do in the future. If you haven't heard Under the Moonlight yet, it is the latest single that we released. It's available on all streaming platforms, uh, iTunes, Amazon, Spotify, uh, it's on Napster, believe it or not. It, for those of you who didn't realize that was still a thing, it is. And uh, I will put the link to that song, uh, the YouTube version, in the description of this video. Uh, I'll also probably go through and put a link to all the parts of this series in the description. So if you're looking for a specific part, you, know, you can find it on any one of the videos. I'll do this in six parts. I'll start with drums, move to bass. Uh, probably going to go to keyboards next. Um, and I'll explain why I do that instead of guitar when I do that, then to guitar, then vocals, and then finally our, uh, the wrap-up video uh, where I'll go over some things on the master bus, um, some automation that I'm, uh, I'm doing, and then uh, out to my mastering chain and show you uh, the, the three or four things I do in mastering to, uh, to kind of finalize the, the song before I upload it. So uh, that said, um, we can get on to, on to working here. I'm going to leave my master chain on. Um, probably throughout the videos I'll leave that on. Uh, the only thing I did other than the standard things I do in mixing is I put a limiter at the end of it uh, just to bring up the volume because when, when I have the plugins off, especially on the drums, without the parallel compression, the volume is really low. Uh, some vocal things that are really low there too. So hopefully that'll help bring, bring some volume up. I don't have any gain reduction on there. I just have it uh, brought down just to bring the overall volume up. All right, here we are in Reaper. I have all of the uh, I have the drum soloed out. I have all of the plugins disabled for now. Uh, I'm going to go through each at a time and show you every plugin that I use and how I add them in. Uh, first, let me play just a little bit of the drums. I'll move on. Uh, I'll do a verse. We have a kind of a, a more ramped up verse, a bridge, and then finally the chorus part that I'll play you. And uh, just intro the parts. I'll try not to talk in between. So here's the here's the verse uh, drums only. Here's the kind of ramped up verse with more uh, open hi hat going on. Here's the bridge. And here's the chorus. Here he's doing a, Spike is doing a really cool uh, ride cymbal back and forth hi hat thing. It's uh, probably a big workout for him. And I'll let one of the tom fills come in. All right, so drums are okay. I didn't. Uh, we don't have the best of recording rooms. It's not necessarily drum friendly. We have a lot of sound dampening in there and a lot of sound proofing to try to limit the amount of sound that the neighbors have to listen to. Um, but we, you know, we're a uh, we get, we get decent sounds out of it. We had a lot of problems with the snare. I'll get to that in a little bit. And uh, our room mic wasn't the greatest, but you know, you get, you get what you what you get and what you have to work with. One of my goals is I didn't want to replace with the samples just because I wanted to keep the integrity of the original performance. Uh, I do not time align any of my drums. Um, I will fix timing on fills and, and things like that. Uh, but for the most part, I don't, I don't fix any of the time align. In fact, um, if I zoom in really, really, really close here, you can kind of tell. He plays, he plays behind, so this is a kick right here. Drummer plays behind the beat a lot. And you can almost set the metronome behind the beat to the way he plays. Uh, kind of a cool effect there. So let me get everything lined up now that I've screwed it all up here. All right, so here we go with um, starting out with the drum bus. What I usually do is I put a, uh, put EQ and compression on the drum bus. I'm using Waves R channel here because that was the plugin of the week, apparently at the time. Um, play this with and without. I'm doing just two EQ bumps, um, two dB at uh, 260k, and then the uh, 
three and a half dB or so at at 5K. Um, the 260 was kind of bring out this crack in the snare a little bit, or the, you know, the body uh, and tack of the snare. 4K was kind of the sheen of hi hats, overhead cymbals, th things like that. So before and then with it on, it's going to be very subtle. You want probably want to listen with headphones or or good studio monitors here to get the differences of what I'm doing. Um, and then I use the Kramer tape. I would I, I would throw this thing on everything. Uh, in fact, I do, as you, you'll see a recurring theme here in these videos. And uh, this is just going to add some tape saturation, just kind of kind of glue things together. One thing on the on the channel strip, I also add some compression, uh, just real light. You know, it's not doing much. Two and a half dB of gain reduction tops, and then output gain to to basically match the the volume up. So it's, Maybe a tad louder, not not enough to, to worry about. So the Kramer tape, this thing I love. Um, I don't hit it real hard. A lot of the times I'll hit it so that you know I'm hitting about zero on the view meter. But here I'm just just a little bit, just to to more like a glue is a is a good word, but I, it's hard to describe what it means. But just to kind of focus and bring everything in together. And then I do a, a I have a room reverb, which I call a reverb short, that I send it to. And I do send the whole kit to it, along with individual uh, instruments that you'll see as I come in. So that's the whole kit. Snare doesn't sound great. Overheads don't sound great. There's some possible phasing issues there. Uh, we'll get to all that. So start with the kick drum. And solo this out. Source isn't bad. A little low in volume, but I've done that on purpose because I, I bring, bring a lot of the volume up with parallel compression as I go on. Uh, the first plugin that I put right on the kick is this uh, Pultec, or Puig Tech as Vase calls it, um, style EQ. I do the boost and the attenuation at the same, so it does kind of a one of these kind of kind of weird EQ curves. And then I, I leave it at 60 hertz. 60 hertz is kind of the sweet spot. Um, if you haven't heard the song again, go back and listen to it before you go any further in this. We're an original funk rock band. Uh, this song has a, a heavy disco feel. You can hear the four on the floor through the whole thing. And uh, we, we just kind of build on that as a band. Um, next up is the SSL channel. I do a, a very, very low high pass filter and a, a low pass. Low pass is pretty high. It's what, 10K right now. I could probably put it down quite a bit. Um, but then I do some, some pretty big boosts here. I do like 9 dB at... Uh, and these, I, I apologize for the way these numbers come out. Waves needs to fix their shit for uh, plugins on a 4K monitor. I'm sure the next version, which I'll have to pay for, uh, will bring that, you know, will bring that feature to. Right now, I can't resize this at all, so it is kind of a pain. Um, I've, I'm trying to get the volume or get the, sorry, get the resolution of these videos so that you can maybe full screen them on a 1080p monitor and still make it out. Uh, well, you should be, definitely be able to see it on a 4K. But so I have, uh, you know, this is five just under five and a half K that I have a 9 dB boost on the high end, uh, 6 dB boost uh, around 2K. And then uh, I sweep around for a, a frequency that I don't like, kind of makes it sound boxy. And uh, I took out about five dB of that, but if I, if I boost this, kind of just that, it sounds like it's hitting a cardboard box. Don't really care for that, so I pull that out, and then my uh, 6 dB boost right at 60k, and that's going to be where my main body and, and thump of that kick comes from. Um, next, because I ran out of, uh, oh, and I also do some compression on here, um, four to one ratio. F leave the fast attack, you know, pretty standard compression for a kick drum. I've also done some 1176 compression, but on this track. I felt that this was fine without it. Um, and I do a little bit of gating to kind of get all that extra bleed out of there. You know, so before, kind of real muddy, real not real focused. And then after, just all the focus comes through. Um, one thing I do, so I, 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 I'm, you'll see in this video, I, I have three different main EQs going over. I used to use the Rhea EQ, which is the default one that comes with Reaper. Uh, for a couple mixes, I've moved over to the Renaissance EQ, REQ. Um, and recently I found this, this new uh, 
it's it's written as a JS, but you have to download and install it called reEQ. <sighs> Why don't we get all the EQs to sound the same or have the same names, guys? Uh, figure this out. Maybe this will become you know a standard in Reaper next. It's more like a fab filter. There's a, a, a kind of a cool things you can do. Uh, what I did here is I needed another EQ on this, so I just grabbed this one for one thing. And uh, 121 hertz is where I am boosting the bass. And what I like to do is I like to boost the bass at six, or the kick at 60, cut the bass at 60, boost the bass at 120-ish. It's anywhere from 90 to 200, and then cut the bass or cut the kick in that same frequency. So you probably can't even tell right now what it what it really sounds like alone but when you get the bass in there you can see the, some of the separation and then uh, I wanted more of a of a low-end thump to it so waves factory has this free plugin it's basically a sub kick simulator we don't have a sub kick uh, we actually ran out of channels for drums so we only have nine available to us um, but this adds that low thump so that's all of the uh, the direct EQ or direct uh, effects moving on to the um, sends. Uh, the first one I have is parallel compression and I'll turn that on. This is going to be a big volume boost here. And if I bring up the effects on that, I'm pushing it through this uh, Kramer Edge LS just for an analog goodness. So I crank the preamp all the way up, don't do anything with EQ or anything, and just input and output to match. So it's hitting, as long as it's not pegging it, it can hit up to three a couple times and it's no problem. Adding a little bit of distortion to your kick actually works really well as I'll show you in a little bit. And then I'm slamming the hell out of it with uh, Waves SSL comp. You know, you see how there's a lot of gain, uh, gain reduction going on here. And then I hit it with both a high pass and a low pass filter on EQ. And then I put a brick wall limiter on to kind of slam it. So again, with it, now there's going to be a lot of volume change, so it's hard to tell, but without it and with it, there's just a ton of punch, a ton of liveness. Next send is the clipper. Um, and what I will say is, uh, I'll stop this while I babble for a little bit. Um, there's a guy on the groups, his name is Brandon S. Heyer. He does a series of videos that are called the, the Mix Minute videos, and he went through seven or eight different videos on his drum uh, sends. So, he has uh, some of them I already had in place, some of them I've stolen from him. Uh, thanks, Brandon, appreciate it. I've used my own plugins, don't use the same ones he does, but one of the ones that he uses is a clipper on his uh, shells. Um, mostly just snare and kick, and what that is is that actually adds distortion directly to your, uh, to your drums. So here's the, I'll start playing it again, and I have it on. So if I solo just the clipper, kind of adding a little bit of distortion. So I have the Abbey Road Saturator on, hitting it pretty good. Um, doing a couple boosts here on the, uh, a couple boosts in one cut just to get some, some frequencies accentuated and, and cut out. And then another brick wall. And then right at the end, um, there was a weird frequency I didn't like on the snare. Um, and I just took it out with, with this. So go back to just the kick so that's adding a little bit next is um, the max bass plugin or max bass uh, which is I stole that one directly off Brandon because I was just copying as I was watching the YouTube video he has a plugin called max bass that he's using I use a renaissance bass from waves I stick it right at 60 and I kind of mess with it until it sounds pretty good by itself all it is is really thump um, there's another trick you can use uh, that I've done in mixes where you take a uh, gate and you send it to a 60 hertz noise um, or, or signal generator and you trigger it just when the gate opens. It adds that, you know, womp, womp, womp kind of sound to it. Uh, next one is a gated verb. Uh, and I'll add that to the kick and it gives it, you know, the song Under the Moonlight, it's taking your girl on a mountaintop, letting things happen under the moonlight. Let your imagination go on that one. I kind of thought in the beginning of the song, especially in the beginning when it's just kick um, with some hi-hat and as everything's building up, I really like the cavernous, like, 
echo sound. You know, imagine you're at the by base of a mountain, you're hitting this like giant 50 foot bass drum, and uh, it's echoing through the mountains. So that's the kind of sound I wanted. When I first did it, I was like, this is way too much verb. And then I started listening, I'm like, no, actually, that sounds really good. Um, so the gated verb here is Abbey Road's Plates. Uh, with a, one of the default settings, I just kind of went through and found something that, that sounded good. And then I put the C1 gate from Waves on it. So without the gate, so let me see if I solo this. You almost can't even hear it. It just adds that little bit of, of extra, you know, echo to it on each hit. It's, it's very, very, very subtle. And the final one is a drum punch. Uh, what I did for this is I took the um, JS transient controller, put it up to 100% so I can get all the transients popped up there. And then I did two boosts, one for the kick at about 80 hertz, one for the snare at about 1k. Uh, and I'll, alone, very subtle. It's just like pop, 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 and that's just... A lot of these things, you know, mixing is a thousand different small moves to make one big mix. If, if you look at it that way, and based on the number of plugins I have, yeah. So, moving on here, uh, going to the snare. So the kick done as far as I'm concerned. I really like the thump of it, really like the feel, I like the body, I like how it interacts with the bass, and I'll show you that in the bass video. So we'll go to the snare. So right away you can hear, it almost sounds like a timbale. There's almost no snare like actual snare drum sound, uh, you know, the, the snares. We had a bottom snare track, it was so bad, it was actually better to not use it. Um, what I, I'll show you how I fix that in a second, but first I wanna show you what I did for processing on this. Um, I used the AS, uh, AIX DSP multiband gate, and that almost eliminates the hi-hat. So without it, Almost sounds like another overhead track, and then with it. Um, this is a great plugin. If you don't use this on your drums, um, urge you to take a look at it. It's it's cheap. It's fifty or sixty bucks or whatever it is. Uh, really love the way it sounds. All right. So once I have that in, I go to my EQ, and this is where I started using the JS EQ. It's really powerful for the snare, and you can hear even without adding anything. It brought the snare sound to it. It really brought the almost sounds like there's an it's an actual real snare at this point. Um, I did have a number of very very problematic frequencies, and this EQ is really really good. I know the guys who pro who run FabFilter are probably like, yeah, I've been doing that for years on FabFilter. Well, you know, the rest of us we use something like this. Um, if I boost this frequency here, and I did a lot, I had 11 dB gain reduction here. If you boost this, it's just this really annoying whoop, 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 and it's just couldn't take it anymore. So was able to narrow and dial that frequency in, and you can really get in. And if you go away from it, but you can really, you know, really nail that that frequency down. Uh, and there are a couple other overtone frequencies, very, very similar. So this one, this one sounds like somebody has their hands cupped over, you know, like a mic playing a, I don't know, something that makes a high pitch annoying shit noise like this. Uh, and then another one even worse. So love this EQ, love what I've been able to do with it. Um, other than that, I just have a high pass at 185 hertz. I'll take this anywhere from 100 to 200, depending on the snare and depending on the sound that I want. Um, quick, quick tip, you can get a really, really high pitch snare out of a low pitch snare just with high pass filter. Imagine that. And then I do a bump at uh, 4K and then a high shelf at 8K. So without the EQ, and then with the EQ much much nicer snare drum especially for this song i want that that 70s disco uh there's a number of bands that, that these days have a higher pitch snare uh gray by isle stars is one lettuce is another that just almost almost a piccolo sound but with a piccolo snare you really really can tell because it's that it's that 
definitely you know almost too much by the end of the song you just don't want to hear it anymore with this we were able to get you know a much woodier sounding snare get, having that sound in on a compression uh 1176 on snare it's almost always my go-to and i'm not hitting it too high i'm hitting about three db gain reduction here maybe some of the higher hits will go up to five or six but if you really crank it you get too much and you really tell it's too much and it's almost like flattening out and, and taking away the attack so then i have a uh, kramer tape which favorite i don't want to hit this one too hard because again that can kind of almost bad distortion on the snare so I just do it in a little you know before and after i'll do before and after both the compression in this and then after get more of the sustain more of the you know good feel to it and then here i'm doing a uh, regate um with that a trigger and i'll show you this in the next track i trigger uh easy drummer for for some added coolness so the last thing i want to show you is this snare buzz plugin from waves factory you can take a regular sounding snare and if it didn't have a bottom mic this almost basically even though it shows a, a, a top mic here listen to what i do when i change it or turn it on so that's definitely that snare off and then on so this has saved me this, there's a number of different snare sounds in our different rooms you can change the mic distance back and forth you can change the amount of snare that goes into the, in the mix and things like that um, really really love this plugin uh, that said we're going to try to not use it for the next song because we are next couple um, next group of songs uh, we still have two more that are coming for our album that, that's due out this year, but want to just try to kind of get rid of, uh, kind of get rid of using that and use more natural sounding uh, instead of more of an artificial sounding plugin. All right, now let's get on to the sends. There's a lot of them for this, so I apologize if this is going long. Uh, this is just so I want to get all through all this stuff and go through all the details. Uh, first thing we do is the parallel compression. And this brings up the volume a little bit. And if I, if I solo the P drums now, um, that's get that real pumping style compression and then I, I blend it in I have it pretty loud I, I, I like this on this song in particular what it's doing to the snare sound um, what I have next is an exciter and what this is is the um, vintage exciter with kind of just a standard setting that I kind of played around a little bit and then some EQ to kind of high pass and low pass. What you can do with an exciter is you can add harmonic frequencies without actually adding EQ. When you add EQ, you add phase the possibility of phase issues. I haven't had enough phase issues with this snare as it is. Uh, adding this adds almost like high end without adding EQ. Um, I'll play this just by itself. So again, it's not, not a huge big thing, but if you turn it off and on, here it's off, and then here it's on. So it just kind of adds, you know, a little bit of, of top end body. Uh, next is a clipper, and this one really adds some good stuff to it. Um, go back to the clipper, so you can hear it's just slamming it and then compressing the shit out of it. So it's getting extra goodness in there. Uh, next one's a gated verb. Again, it's it's really 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 low. If we go back to the verb channel, you can hear it, but it's not adding crazy amounts. Um, next is that drum punch. It just adds a little bit of attack. You probably can't even hear it now in the mix. It makes sense. Um, oh, I'm sorry, that was not that. That's here's the drum punch. Uh, the other one is a plate snare that I have just for snare. And that's more your traditional snare verb sound. Uh, again, not very loud. And then I have a, a long verb, which is more of a, a, a bigger plate, bigger room type verb that I threw on there. But again, the send is real low. It's negative 11 uh, dB, so it's not really killing it. Uh, but here's the secret weapon. I'll turn on the send over this other track, and I'll turn on all of this. So I wanted that, that like Prince 
80s disco sound with the snare. So I put a giant clap on there. And I'm using uh, Easy Drummer and I'm using the number one hits pack uh, with just a, a clap that I found in there, spinning around with it. But mixed together, it's kind of this... You almost can't tell what it is. You're like, there's something in there. It almost sounds like more verb. And we'll get up later on. I'll play the whole song together. But here's the whole set right now. And a lot of you guys are probably cringing because this is like over overboard as far as the verb sound goes. It really works with this song. Trust me. All right, we'll get to the toms. Let me find a section of this. Tom's here. So I'll go through one. That's pretty annoying. Right there. I'll go through one. What I'm doing on one tom, and I do the same thing on all the toms, except for the EQ is slightly different. So the first thing I do is I have this. Oh, let me go back in here. I have the multiband gate on, um, and you can see. You, know, you can see that come through. You can, and I won't do it because it's just annoying as hell. You can highlight just the single tom hit, have it just hit over and over, and you can see that you know the the peaks come through, and you can choose exactly where the the threshold is. Uh, then I'm doing some EQ. I do a, a high pass filter on everything. I do a boost where the beef of the tom note is. I do a cut to kind of get that the same kind of kick thing boxiness um, out of there. And boxiness is usually somewhere around 300 hertz. Uh, and then I do one boost for attack, and then I clip it off with a with a low pass filter. Uh, I do that for for every one of my toms. These will look very similar; they'll just have different uh, EQ ranges. And then I'll put uh, I'm actually using Recomp here uh, because I, I just it, it it's a tom; it doesn't really need a whole lot. Um, so we'll do all of. Here, I'll just show you the EQ curve. So here's the EQ curve for the mid time. It's just a little bit different. Each of the, each of the settings are, are a little bit different. And then for the floor time, they're even more different. You know, the, the beefier, bassier um, is lower, you know, and things like that. So turn all of the plugins on. For sends, I'm doing the uh, parallel compression again. I'm using the Drums Exciter because uh, I kind of like that extra um, clarity it gives. Uh, I'm using the Gated Verb because it's a Tom and it's a disco song. And I'm using the the room, the regular like room reverb that I already have on the kit. So we'll do like, a, um, I can't do before and after for all the sends, but I can do before and after for the, for the EQs. I'll not do that. Uh, so here's before. And then here's after. The biggest thing you're going to notice is there's no bleed anymore. So we get kind of that, kind of that big rumbly, um, almost sounds like you're, you know, you're, if you've been in a live show where they mic up the times and they do that sound check and they hit the first one, it's like boom. I love that, you know, love that sound on these times when my drummer does too. So we'll move on from there. The times aren't. If anyone has any questions, by the way, if anyone has any questions about any of this stuff, um, let me know if there's anything you want me to go through in more detail. I know we're running, it's coming up on what, like a half an hour here on this video. Uh, don't want to make this too long, but we're almost done, so bear with me. Next are going to be the overheads. So before, um, and I'll put this on, uh, put this on this verse. So there's kind of some phase things going on. We had a, uh, I had to move over one of the ones to kind of match up for some of the things. You can either change phasing with the actual phase button, you can do it with lining tracks up, or you can actually do it with EQ. So for these, what I did is I took, let's see if I can get both of these, I'm limited screen space here so you guys don't have to get killed by a 4K monitor, uh, but we'll just do before and, um, before and after. So here's before the EQ. Here's after. So I took out all of the body. So I have a high pass here that goes all the way up almost to 400 hertz. I have a cut here. Actually, let me do this. Let me solo just one of them and put it right up the center so you can hear. So we have a high pass filter at almost 400 hertz. We have a big cut. Um, 
buggy plugin. Sorry about that. We have a big cut of almost 20 dB at this 800 hertz frequency. Um, listen to what I do when I boost it up again. You hear that snare thing? That's annoying as hell. Even at like zero. You can kind of hear it there. So I cut that completely out and then I do a, a shelf boost right around 8K. Um, 3 dB is all I really need for these. So I will put this back to left because both of them have the same exact EQ settings then. Um, next is the, I use SSL comp um, for my overheads. I just like the way it sounds. And I'm hitting them, you know, 4 dB, maybe a little bit more on the bigger hits. Uh, so, you know, most of the things you use overhead for are cymbals and uh, hi-hat and things like that. For the snare hits, some of them are, you know, with this, like, last palm fill. Um, you know, it jumped up there a little bit, but that's not really going to affect the sound overall. And then, my favorite plugin, Kramer Tape. And this one I'm hitting pretty hard. Hitting this right up about zero because I want some of that extra, you know, the more kind of saturation you put in, the less harsh things can be. Um, and you can see that some of these cymbal crashes actually pegs it out. So, um, adding on to that, I use the Drums Exciter again. And that adds a little bit of body and a little bit of... I don't want to use the word excite, but it, a little bit, I, I don't want to even say top end, but it's like extra frequencies and extra harmonies that, are, that weren't there. And then uh, my room reverb. It's really not a lot going on there. Um, what does have a lot going on with it is the room mic. And this one's kind of a mess. Uh, you can see I have a whole boatload of plugins on there. Um, playing it alone, it was basically like a room, like a center room mic. So I'll play that here. As a room mic, it's picking up way too much hi-hats, picking up way too much cymbals, not enough of the of the heart of the drums, which is what you really want a room mic to do. So I went kind of crazy on this one. Um, and I'll just play this as I go through. I ran it through three different analog console emulators. Um, the Sheps 1073. I'm doing a little bit of a high-pass filter here, but I'm mainly using it just because I crank the input all the way up and then output to compensate. And then I put the preamp up. Um, basically the same thing with the HLS. Um, and this one, it's going to get loud before I tame it down, so apologies for that. This is kind of just preamp cranked all the way up, no EQ, and then input all the way up and output to, to compensate. And then the Kramer tape. And this actually adds in a lot of distortion. You can hear it on the snare especially. And it sounds awful, but bear with me. Here we go. Um, 1176 compressor. This is, makes it really loud. Sorry about that. And then I kill it with EQ. It's still a little bit harsh for a room mic, and there's still a lot of symbols going on in there. But I have a high pass filter and I have a low pass filter. Pretty low, you know. This is taking a lot of high end off. And then there was just an annoying, another annoying frequency here. It just had a, like a real beef of the snare and everything. Didn't want that in there at all. Here's a trick. Watch what happens when I click this. So we go from this really, really harsh thing to adding this Abbey Road saturator and now it sounds like we're listening to like the drums from a club from like two blocks away. And then no room, uh, room mic would be complete without a long reverb on it. And this is like by itself, this is almost completely useless. But listen to what happens when I take it in and out of the snare, or in and out of the, the whole mix of the kit. So here's all the drums, all the processing on with the room mic muted. And then here's when I add the room mic. This opens it right up, gives it a lot of depth. All right, so that's the drum video. Um, hope you enjoyed this. I, I, I'm new to this, if you can't tell, as I babble through every video or every every single thing. And 
every single concept and every single plugin. But uh, hopefully these will get a little smoother as I go on and uh, get into more detail. If there's any questions, leave them in the comments. If there's anything I'm doing wrong, I mean, it's YouTube. You guys got to, it's your duty as YouTubers to tell people when they're doing things wrong. So please get in the comments. Tell me what I'm doing wrong. Um, if anything here can help you. If I, I could do anything much faster, much easier, uh, I would appreciate that as a mixer. And I'm really doing this just for the community to share and, and for people to see what I'm doing. And, you know, hey, how do you do that one thing where, whatever the question is, YouTube is always a place to go for these things. So until next time, uh, next video will be bass. And uh, look forward to uh, doing that one soon.